The following is an Outdoor Channel original production. This episode of Sasquatch Mountain Man is presented by Shell Rotella, the engine oil that works as hard as you. Born of the mountains. Blood of the Indian. He lives by the way he hunts. He rekindles the fires of the past and roams in buckskin. He survives by hawking and longbow. He's forged by the elements. Journey with the last of a breed, Sasquatch, Mountain Man. The grand wild expanse of the West, made for the few, the ones willing to face its rigors. Here, predators write the rules, and nature is in agreement. Forging his own tools, Laramie takes survival into his own hands. As seasons pass, it takes the skills of a craftsman to make certain he's got a fit hawking gun for the mountains. Against the current of time, Laramie Miller presses on, keeping alive the memory of the wild. The miles that have been laid bare are paced out again, and experiences come together so that they too can be passed down. Join us now as we relive highlights of the ways and wanderings of Laramie Miller, Mountain Man. The great herds of yesteryear can still be found. Pretty crazy, I've never seen anything like this migration that's going on up here. I've literally probably seen a few thousand caribou. Just a matter of time, sit and be patient. You get your shot. There's so many caribou right here. If I just hunker down sooner or later, I will get a chance at a nice caribou. For Laramie, it's a numbers game, and the numbers just keep rising. At least a thousand caribou just funneled by us for two hours. But not one of them big bulls would come closer than 60 yards. About 45 is my max. That's as far as I'm going to shoot. But I tell you what, that was absolutely unreal. I've never seen anything like it. From a long day among caribou, Laramie spends a short night under the northern light. Perplexing to Laramie is not a lack of caribou, but too damn many. Dang it, there's a cow in the way. Dang it. She's going by it.
there no more. You know, this is a pretty neat opportunity for me because these villages around here, they have to survive off the land. They have to know what their ancestors knew. For me, that makes it all worth it. Plus, look at this country. I mean, how could you not want to be in this beautiful surrounding that they call home? Nothing like fresh, fresh meat. I mean, that ain't even been dead for an hour. Mm. Now I might be able to make it back to the river. <laughs> the most rugged portion of this hunt may be the trudge over the tundra with a caribou on your back. And I thought chasing him down was the hard part. Sign up for the Bass Pro Shops Outdoor Channel, Mountain Man Sweepstakes. Log on to BassPro.com forward slash Mountain Man Sweeps and enter to win a $5,000 shopping spree. Fill up your possibles bag with all the essential hunting gear. Sign up, Bass Pro Shops Mountain Man Sweepstakes. That's BassPro.com forward slash Mountain Man Sweeps. Bass Pro Shops. Your adventure starts here. The best of all country, the best of all journeys, the time the mountain man spends in the wild. The black steel of traps. Another trail Laramie Miller follows on his journey. Right here I've got, I've already got a trap line set. I set it a couple days ago. It's late fall, these beavers are running up and down. They're eating all these willows, they're taking them back to their hut. They're trying to make sure that their dam is nice and sealed up because they need that water level up so that they can survive the winter. So what I'm doing, is I've torn the dam apart a couple places, set some lake holds. I've got a couple conor bears set in a couple runways like this. I'm gonna set a few more, and then it's just a waiting game. I love trapping because it's like a game of chess. It's not like hunting. Hunting, you get within 100 yards of an animal. Trapping, you gotta get it to go in that one spot you have a trap set. It's a challenge, but I love it. Tell you what, that little sucker's been busy right here. You can see where he's been eating a bunch of these willows, cutting them down. This would be a good spot to set another conor bear. So that beaver's dam and hut is that way. More than likely, he's gonna come right down this slough headed for this water. He'll go right through that and kablammy. Now what I've done is I've got it set but I'm gonna take a couple sticks and I'm gonna shove them in the springs. So when that thing traps, that beaver doesn't float down wherever. And then I'll take the chain and I'll just wrap it around these willows. Good to go. Laramie doesn't count on just one trap. He's got several around the pond and he needs to be checking each of them Regular. I can see it from here. We got something. Well, will you look at that? My whole honey hole paid off again. That's the sight you like to see. You know, to the mountain men back in the day, this right here was brown gold. This is the most profitable business because Everybody was making hats and stuff out of beaver back east, so they had a high demand. Well, it's not quite as profitable today, but it's still fun in a way of life. Getting a beaver to swim into the trap is only half the battle. Back in camp, the fine work begins. Once I get this skinned out, I'll take it over to the fleshing board, flush it real good, and then I'll stretch it and dry it. Luckily for the old trappers, they had plenty of time to flesh their pelts. 
A finished one was called a made beaver, and the better the job, the higher the price. Now it's ready just to stretch. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna punch holes all the way around that beaver hide, and then I'll just lace it through. That way I can stretch it inside that hoop. Well, there you are. And I'll let that stretch for a couple days to where all this dries out. And then it's ready to either tan or ship off to the market. You know, Mother Nature gives you everything you need out there. You just gotta be willing to look for it. Brought to you by the Ego Power Plus Lawnmower. Ego, power beyond belief. Brought to you by Shell Rotella, the engine oil that works as hard as you. Maybe nearest and dearest to Laramie's heart is the Wapiti, better known as the Elk. For Laramie, it's about them, where they live, how they live, and how you hunt them. I can really smell the elk in here. There's beds all over the place and a bunch of rubs. I'm gonna sneak down here and set up and call and see if I can call a bull in. That big bull's got some cows. He's not wanting to join our party, so I guess I'll go crash his. I'm gonna have to move down there closer. It's past. This bull broke off an antler. It's a full day of man's work to get an elk broke down and packed out with a little help from a good horse. The reward that makes the work worthwhile, though, is fresh elk meat. Most people look around and they see rock. Well, I look around and see tools. Everywhere you look, there's tools. You just gotta recognize them. Out east, you pay big money for a steak like that. 
It's a steak well earned, Laramie. Bass Pro Shops. Your adventure starts here. These are the woods, and that's a bear. And Laramie's done the math. Into May, this is about the best time to find a big, big boy. You could see a big bear just about anywhere. You know, they'll lock up with the sow and they may be with her for a day, two days, three days, breeding her. And then he'll go about his business and go find another one. Kind of scandalous if you ask me, but... Survival of the fittest, I guess. From where he sits, Laramie spots one of the fittest bears on the mountain. Taking a bear with one shot, even with a hawking, is no mean feat, let me tell you. But that's the way Laramie's chosen. I smacked him. I hammered him good. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> that happened quick. I'm sitting here just watching this hillside. Out of nowhere, here come that sow. And then, I see the big boar. Oh, this is awesome. <clears throat> I love it. <laughs> I absolutely love it. If bear don't excite you, then nothing will. Man, that right there is a tank of a bear. Look, old warrior, you look. His teeth are all broken off and worn down. Heck, he's missing that one. That is a dandy, dandy bear. I mean, he's a monster. This might be the biggest black bear I've ever killed in my life. Look at the skull on that thing. Man. Look at the size of those paws. Just to show you how big this bear is. Remember, I'm 6'6". Six, six. Oh. It's a big bear. Now the work begins. Find somewhere right here to kind of stash him and put some brush over him. Come back and get him in the morning. Peeling the hide off a of Bruin is the kind of work that puts Laramie in mind of older times. Kind of funny, my grandpa used to guide hunters and whatnot. And he'd always tell the hunters that this right here, that's the bad meat. You might as well just give that meat to him or leave it there or something because it ain't worth a dang. <laughs> it's a backstrap. That's what your tenderloin steaks and stuff like that are made of. <laughs> Old grandpa, he's a he's a sly one. <laughs> I couldn't be more thankful. This old bear. This is the kind of bear you want to take. I'm thankful he's gonna provide me with some food. Some bear fat, a nice hide. I'm gonna use every bit of this bear. It won't anything go to waste. And that's how it should be. Trim up this back strap, and I'm gonna roll it in some morel mushrooms. Salt and pepper it, a little bit of sage. Be just like mama's home. 